Hi, I'm Charlize Theron, and we're going through my style evolution. Oh, that's my mom. She looks cute. I don't really remember this. I think, I guess it was just a, a premiere that I went to and it looks like Dolce & Gabbana. I look like I'm having an awesome time with my mom though, so. It's not a bad look actually. The pants don't feel very 90s, feels a little timeless. So yeah, I'm not too embarrassed about that one. Oh, I remember this. This is Missoni. I wore this to the Tom Hanks film, That Thing You Do. Back then I didn't have a lot of options, not a lot of designers send me stuff. So I think this was the only thing that my publicist at the time like got. It was a 60s film and it felt kind of retro. That was like such a flashback of a memory. I got to be in a Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, this is a this is Hervé Leger. This is the Devil's Advocate premiere, which I guess I probably thought red would be a good color to wear to the premiere of The Devil's Advocate. But I like that dress. I thought it was really nice. I had never worn a Hervé Leger dress before, so that was my, I popped my cherry on that one. <laughs> that was my first Hervé. There was like a period where that's all everybody wore, so I, I was catching up to that. Oh, it was a great evening. This film with Al Pacino and my good pal Keanu Reeves, and it was really kind of like my first film of that caliber, and I was so excited, and my mom was there, and. This was kind of a moment in my life where I felt like, well, maybe I don't have to get a second job. So that's pretty, that's pretty good. I definitely celebrated that. I was very chuffed with myself that night. I don't remember a lot about this dress. I don't even know, what is that, the sag? I don't remember that. I think it's a dress that's just so 90s, even though it's 2000s. Yeah, but it just, it feels like a dress very, uh, reminiscent of the 90s, which is kind of great because that's what it was with the choker collar. And I don't think it's something that I would wear now, but it's definitely of that time. And I feel like that's just kind of what, what everybody was wearing at that time. Oh, this was Vera Wang made me uh, this dress for the Oscars. It was my first time going to the Oscars. I had a film that was nominated, The Cider House Rules. That was really special. I, I think that was also the first time somebody made a dress for me. My friend Cindy Evans styled it and Vera was just so, just so incredible. You know, I wasn't really a big name at that time. And so for her to spend as much time and energy as she did in making that for me, it was really, really, really special. The back of that dress was rouged in the butt. <laughs> and when I sat down in the theater, because it's such a light chiffon, the rouging in the butt split open. And when I stood up for the first like standing ovation, I felt this kind of cool breeze coming up my tush. And I realized my whole butt was hanging out. And then I went to the bathroom and I panicked. I didn't know what to do. And I remember Julian Moore was on all fours in her gown, like searching for a safety pin on the floor and she found one. And I saved the dress with the safety pin in it. I, I sent it off in the dry cleaners and I'm like, she wants us to fix this? And I was like, don't touch it. I want it to stay exactly the way Julian Moore fixed it. So it's still, I still have the dress with the safety pin in it. Thank you, Julian. Oh my God. Yeah, this is, I think, definitely Dolce & Gabbana. I like this dress just because the film was kind of like sitting on the porch in a rocking chair, drinking a mint julep, like kind of like that just Southern flowy elegance. The film was from the, I think the 20s and the 30s. And so the dress just kind of like felt like it had like a tiny pang of that going on for it. But I just remember kind of like going to the premiere and still finding myself kind of flabbergasted that I was directed in a film by Robert Redford. So that was pretty amazing. Oh, this was really special. Cindy Evans styled this and she was kind of very involved in kind of creating this concept with Gucci, everybody at Gucci. And oh, this is obviously the year that I was nominated uh, as an actress and I won. And so, I mean, you know, I could have worn a potato sack and I would have been pretty chuffed with myself, but I felt really pretty in this and kind of ethereal, which I guess was so kind of the opposite of what the film was and playing Eileen Warnos. The only thing I remember about this is everybody talked about my fake tan and it was actually a real tan. I went to Brazil right before the Oscars. It was a real tan, folks. I have an Oscar to show for it, so watch out, people. Oh, I love this. This was a dress that John Galliano um, designed for me, a Dior. 
and this was also the year that I started working with Dior. And so this was kind of our first collaboration together. He was just such a lovely collaborator, like just really wanted to know what color I was into. And I loved this dress. I love this dress. I, I never fit it. He took my measurements, made the dress, and I, I literally, I think I was on a film. I came back and put the dress on and it would fit me like a glove. And I don't think I would wear anything like that today, but I just love, I love, in that time in my life, like I think it's a really pretty dress. And I won this night too, by the way. I won Golden Globe. <laughs> and Jack Nicholson gave me my Golden Globe. That was so cool. I love in all these photos, there's my mom's like in the back. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, this is John Galliano again uh, for Dior. I remember I went out to go and visit John in Paris and we had done a lot of ethereal kind of like classic things and, and he was like very mischievous and wanting to kind of like do something that was naughty. And so I thought for the way we were both kind of just talking about being a little bit more mischievous with, with this look, um, but of course, still chic and classic. Like I thought it came out perfect, brilliant for that. I know a lot of people didn't like this dress, but I really love this dress because it's just, it's just a little naughty, you know, just a tiny bit naughty. I think it's great when you wear things that, you know, not everybody might like, that's okay. But it never changed how I felt about that dress. I was never like the next morning when everyone was like putting me on the worst dress list going like, God, I wish I didn't wear this dress. I look at it now and I go like, I think it's a great, part of my repertoire. Oh, this is a really cool dress. Again, Dior, it's hard to see in this photo, but the fabric is uh, was actually rubber and it had all these tiny, tiny little slices in it, which was kind of like a way for us to, I guess, lean into the fact that it was a Mad Max movie and to have it have an element that, you know, felt kind of like raw. It's so hard when you dress for these movies because there's a part of you that still wants to kind of celebrate what the movie is in a weird way or, or go against it. But it felt like a nice dress to wear after I was in the desert for what felt like 400 years <laughs> to celebrate a movie that was really hard to make. I really loved this outfit because I never thought I would ever wear anything like this. This is not kind of my thing. Like I'm not a big, you know, torso shower. <laughs> but there was something really strong about this that I loved. And there was kind of like an ownership and body image that Atomic Blonde was kind of celebrating as a film. And it was so physical, the movie. And so this, the idea of wearing something that was kind of in your face and feeling empowered, I don't think if it wasn't that movie, I don't think I would have ever worn it, but it felt really right for that moment. Universal got us a DJ, we just up in the bar and we danced until the sun came up. And I literally went from the dance party to the airport. And I was still wearing that bra when I flew back under a sweater. <laughs> but that's the story of that outfit. Fast and Furious. Uh, yeah, so this is this was just, I think just from the store. So it felt right. I mean, come on, it's a big fluffy jacket. Feels kind of perfect for Fast and Furious movie, but I don't, there was nothing, we didn't, and nothing about this was made or anything like that. We just, this was kind of like uh, in store at the time and um, Leslie Freemar styled it and picked it for me. And I don't have the jacket anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> but I think I have the t-shirt. Thank you so much for listening to me go down memory lane with my wardrobe and please watch out for my new film, The School of Good and Evil. It's coming out September 30th.